start then. Um, this is um, the English version of the talk. If you're interested in the Welsh version, it'll be available on our YouTube. We've already done a Welsh interview and um, it's already streaming, la streaming on um, Facebook, so on our social media. This is going to be a very strange conversation because I don't think I've ever spoken English with a wine before. Um, so it'll be very, very strange. So bear with us on that. Uh, we all speak Welsh to each other. Um, and so uh, it'll be a very strange, strange for us. So just to give you some um, some feedback, some not feedback, some information about this award. I'm here today with Owain Sparnon, who is the recipient of the Joseph Herman Foundation Art Award in memory of Carolyn Davis. And this is an award that we've been giving to fine art students who graduate from uh, fine art in Swansea College of Art. Um, and this is the third year that this award has been um, awarded or, or granted. And it's Owain Sparnon um, who is the recipient this year. Just a bit of a, um, a sort of an overview about Carolyn Davis. Carolyn Davis was a trustee of the Joseph Herman Foundation and also for a time she was the chair of the Joseph Herman Foundation. Sadly, Carolyn Davis passed away in 2018. And um, we as a foundation, along with the, the family of Carolyn Davis, decided that it would be a good legacy of Carolyn's work, the work that she did with young um, graduates and with students and, and young artists starting out on their career. Carolyn was very supportive um, of students, especially in the Swansea area, um, that we decided to um, uh, give an award every year. And the award is a, is a monetary award of £500. And also um, the, um, the recipient of the award also gets the opportunity, if they so wish, to have an exhibition with uh, the Joseph Herman Foundation or an artist talk, or if there's anything else that they would like to um, engage with us, um, then, then they're open for that engagement. So in a way, they become a friend of, of uh, the Joseph Herman Foundation. Um, so, um, but the award is, is a monetary award and, and that's, um, you know, that's all we, we require of them really. Um, so I've got two hats on here. I'm Gwenllian Ann Vinen. I'm one of the trustees of the Joseph Herman Foundation but I'm also a lecturer at Swansea College of Art. And my role um, on the, the selection panel was as a conduit really for information both ways. So from the Herman Foundation and from the university. Um, and then there was a panel of selectors then that included a representation from uh, Carolyn Davis's family and trustees from the Herman Foundation that then um, uh, sort of um, uh, judge the award. Um, so, so that's the kind of process. Um, just a, a little bit of an overview of the Joseph Herman Foundation, if you don't know what the Joseph Herman Foundation is. Uh, the Joseph Herman Foundation um, has a, a collection of Joseph of the work of the artist Joseph Herman that was gifted to the area um, in the year 2000. Um, so we've got a lovely archive of the work of Joseph Herman in Astrogunlice in the Welfare Hall. Um, and that's really important. Joseph Herman was an important artist for Astrogunlice, although he only lived there for 11 years. Um, but to have a collection of his work in Wales and especially in a place that was really close to his heart um, is really important. So that's the Joseph Herman Foundation. So over to Owain. Um, so this is Owain in his end of year exhibition. And a wine, um, you know, you were really fortunate this year in that, um, you know, we weren't in a in a, in in lockdown as such. So you managed to get your exhibition up on the wall, um, albeit that it was closed to the general general public. Uh, I was lucky. I'm an university lecturer there at Swansea College of Art, so I could get to see the exhibition, and it was amazing really to see the third year show, um, you know, that, that work on the wall and in installations and how innovative and how, um, you know, how exciting it was for you as, as a group of third year students to actually get your work up there. Um, so, um, yeah, so, um, so over to you, Owain then. So what was it like to have your work in an exhibition this year, um, you know, up on the wall? Uh, it was a great um, experience um, having the opportunity to exhibit our work in person um, and in a physical space. Um, many of us, uh, I think, were uh, 
um, well, found it a strange year um, this year with, and last year then, with the um, uncertainty of coronavirus and, um, well, unsure then of um, the future of our degree. But we were very fortunate to um, have the opportunity to curate our work um, to prepare for the exhibition by um, sanding the walls, painting the walls and so forth. And um, it, it was a great experience working with um, the students. Usually um, when it comes to the degree show or any other show, we, as a degree course, we work um, with the first years and the second years. However, due to COVID and the restrictions, we um, only worked um, well together as the third year. But uh, that experience was a great experience. And um, personally, I felt that I um, um, came to know um, the third years better by having a, a closer relationship with them and um, also working with the lecturers, that was a great experience, learning from them, um, understanding the, um, the importance of um, having a space between each works and um, the height difference between each work. It, it was a, um, a great experience and I'm very grateful that I could, um, well, that we had the experience of having a physical exhibition, even though we've had um, virtual exhibitions and online shows during the year, I felt it was um, an excellent experience um, having the opportunity to see the work in a physical space. Yeah, I really uh, enjoyed the process of building it, yeah. Will you get your slideshow up then? I'll oh, talk a bit about yeah. the uh, portfolio. And um, so at the selection panel, um, you know, um, looked at all of the work of the third years or, or, or the graduating third years of fine art, and then um, had a selection of portfolios to look at. And um, the panel were really impressed by, by the quality of the work that they saw. Um, and like I said, when I saw the exhibition, it, you know, it is incredible, really, you know, to consider um, the restrictions, the sort of changing environment, constant changing environment of the last, well, the last two academic years, isn't it, for, for you, you know, it, it's just, it's, you know, it's just incredible, really, what the fine arts students have have done and to think that a lot of that work is physical work as well um, and so the portfolios that we saw you know were, were, were incredible um, and the panel uh, you know had to sort of really make a decision and to go through the decision and um, in your portfolio Owain you also included sketchbook work which, which we haven't got on the slideshow here but uh, for the panelists that this was great you know that they saw the, uh, the uh, sketchbook work because for Joseph Herman, uh, as an artist, sketchbook work was really, really important for him. Um, but also for Carolyn Davis, she was a huge advocate for um, the use of sketchbooks. And for us, as found as um, um, not foundation for um, uh, trustees of the Joseph Herman Foundation, you know, when whenever we have school children in uh, to see see the uh, archive um, then you know we really advocate that we use sketchbooks so it was great that you that you wanted to include that that in there that was fantastic so if you talk a little bit about these works that you've got here then Owain. Yeah um, so the works shown on the slide are works um, which were exhibited at the degree show um, so a, a series of 10 paintings um, I had two series of works in mind of exhibiting. Um, five um, were on a metre square each scale and then the other five works then were on wood and they were on a much smaller scale. Um, but um, so my current work responds to things that I come across on a daily basis. Um, so these can, so these can include uh, photographs, landscapes, reflective lighting, um, sounds and shapes and forms, 
of everyday objects. Um, I'm also intrigued by the idea of layering, unraveling, intertwining, um, and decontextualizing uh, an image um, and the boundary between painting and sculpture. Um, the way in which I work is quite sculptural. Um, and yeah, they, they are quite um, 3D in that aspect. And um, the paintings also reveal recollections thoughts, secrets, and experiences of my subconscious through colour, um, remnants, texture, and the unknown. Okay. So, yeah, um, sorry, I've been having lots of phone calls and things. I hope it's nothing to do with this webinar. If it is, then please put something in the chat. Um, so, yeah, lo lots of technical issues with, with this webinar. So it was great to see your work there, uh, Thomas, in the exhibition. And for me, you know, I was really lucky. Like I said, the panel couldn't go in to see the exhibition, but I was able to, as a university lecturer, to go in to see it. And it was great to see not only your work, but the work of others up on the on the wall. and. Um, you know, it's been a, a very different, difficult, um, you know, couple of uh, couple of years for you, isn't it? You know, so um, yeah, and it was great, and you know, to see the work on the on the white walls, and it must have been also really strange for you as well to put it up, and knowing that you know nobody could go and see it really, just you know your, your fellow students. So it's kind of in a way like having a little bit of a secret exhibition, really, isn't it? You know. Um, okay, thanks for sharing those with us. It it it's great um, to see that. Um, and um, yeah, so brilliant. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit as well. Um, I've uh, I've also noticed as your university lecturer that you've been really busy this year. You know, really, really busy with everything. And so, do you want to just um, you know fill us in on a on a, a few things that you've done this year? Yeah, uh, I was very well. I've been very fortunate um, throughout the year and uh, last year during. Um, the pandemic. Um, um, well, I've had many opportunities throughout the year. Um, I was fortunate to create the Cellar Music Awards um, mm. for the Guabra Cellar, um, and that was a great experience working um, outside of my comfort zone, working in a new, um, well, a new aspect of my work then, and um, that certainly helped with my own uh, practice and development. Um, I also had the experience of um, writing an article for the Friends of the Glyn Vivian um, mm -hmm. on my experiences um, throughout um, coronavirus and the year um, and talking about my artwork and um, interests and inspirations. Um, and I've also had experiences of exhibiting my work um, in person, uh, in a physical space, and also virtually. Um, I was fortunate to be part of an exhibition at Machanlleth, MoMA Machanlleth, um, and to be part of the Young Welsh Artists exhibition. That was a great um, experience and a great honour as well. Um, I was also part of, um, uh, well, I was selected and um, uh, chosen, um, uh, well, as a third uh, prize then for the Holy Art Competition, which is based in London. Um, so the exhibition was virtual, but um, it was based, uh, anyone across um, Britain then could, um, partake um, in the exhibition and I was very uh, grateful and uh, fortunate to have, um, uh, well, come third then, um, yeah. but, but uh, I also had an exhibition with uh, Thomas, my brother, who is also an artist, um, mm. and we had this at the beginning of 2020, uh, so a few months before um, the pandemic and um, at Arad Goch then in Aberystwyth and that was also to a great experience. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and you had um, Peter Lord open that exhibition, didn't you? Yes. In, in 
theatre yeah. out of York, which is, you know, which is incredible, really. You know, two brothers, young brothers here, you know, Thomas graduated a couple of years ago, you graduating now. Um, and, you know, to have an exhibition like that and, and you know, an important Welsh historian like that, art historian opening the exhibition is great. Um, the MoMA exhibition was quite interesting, wasn't it? Because it was a physical exhibition, which you haven't seen because of restrictions. I didn't get to see it either, um, but it was on the wall and then it became a, a virtual exhibition. They recorded it. But also, I think what's really interesting and I, and I think, you know, I think there are lots of opportunities due to um, the pandemic um, as well that, that have opened up is that the website AMAM, isn't it? They had uh, they've got a lot of information there about the artists. So they've got film recordings of you, uh, the artists, um, also images and, and the biography of you. And I think, you know, it's a, it's a new world, it's a different world. And I think to have things like that happening is great. And, you know, to think, you know, that you were still a student in that exhibition. I mean, I think that's also um, a huge achievement um, because it was an exhibition for um, about 11, 11 young people under 30, wasn't it? And, and you were one of them. Um, and so congratulations on that as well. That That's great. Um, okay, so, um, so one more thing as well is, um, you know, you come from uh, Nice, uh, that's where you come from. You went to Skol Estelvera, which is now a school Brodir. And I've noticed as well that, that your teachers there are really supportive of you still. So Eros Lewis and, uh, not Eros Lewis, Eros Rowlands and um, Arwell Mika are really supportive of, of you uh, as one of their ex pupils, which I think is great, isn't it? Um, and, uh, you know, so, um, so what next then, Owain? Um, what are you going to do with the award? And, um, you know, any plans? Uh, yeah, um, well, regarding uh, the, the award, um, I'm, well, hopefully uh, with the money uh, that I've uh, won, hopefully um, to use that money for materials, um, because I work with a uh, lot of different materials and um, that would be of great use. But I'm also looking into the idea of perhaps publishing a booklet on my uh, artwork um, during the year. Um, mm -hmm. And um, well, hopefully uh, for the rest of um, the year, for the time being, I uh, will have the opportunity to develop my artwork and to um, push my artwork further. And um, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, returning back to um, uh, the works because I have uh, lots of ideas in mind. <laughs> Brilliant, that's fantastic. And um, yeah, and and you know, once we've got all these uh, COVID restrictions over, then we'll certainly be arranging an exhibition. Just to note, um, the other two recipients of this award have yet to exhibit with us. Uh, so um, that's something as well we've got on the back burner that, you know, we'll just have this burst of art <laughs> once everything is back to normal, uh, whatever that will be, whatever the new normal is going to be. OK, if there are any questions, then please ask when I can see uh, one here from Kerry, which is a really lovely question. Um, and if there's anything else, you know, that, then then please ask. So Kerry Thomas, um, who is himself an art historian, um, he used to be one of the trustees of the Joseph Herman Foundation. So hi, Kerry. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, so Kerry's asking here, could you say something about possible influences? Are Welsh artists like Mary Lloyd Jones and David Tress relevant? And further afield, how about Howard, Hod Howard Hodgkins and Frank Stella? Great question. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, strangely enough, um, many artists have inspired me, um, especially throughout the year. Um, um, as you uh, noted yourself, Howard Hodgkin has been um, of great influence to me. Um, and um, David Tress, I'm very uh, interested with his work in particular, with how he, um, well, his paintings are very sculptural um, and I'm interested in that um, aspect. But I'm also, um, I'm very fond of um, Gwen John's work, um, portrait work, um, 
and many other uh, Welsh artists, but I'm I'm also interested in um, the old masters and the Renaissance, uh, such as Rembrandt and um, uh, Titian and Tintoretto. Um, and then I'm also interested in um, um, contemporary artists. And um, yeah, but I think my influences throughout the year have um, definitely changed um, due to the pandemic. I feel that my um, direction and artwork has changed a lot and um, I've been very influenced by um, the landscape and photographs and coming across things on a daily basis and um, I, can't, I can't say I'm grateful for coronavirus but um, I, I, I well personally I believe if I well, if we wouldn't have experienced the pandemic or the coronavirus, I don't feel that my work um, and interest wouldn't, wouldn't be the same as it is today. Yeah, I think the, the you know, I, I think being grateful is a strange thing to say, isn't it? But uh, certainly for me as an artist as well, it's given me time to be with mm. my work. Mm. Um, and I think that's something, you know, oh, I've been so grateful for really is that time mm. with my practice and time with my work. And I think for you was, I think when I saw the exhibition, I think that, you know, that that was evident really in people's work is that they had time for their work. And um, yeah, so that's a great question, Kerry. And um, there was a long answer there because I know that the wine is really interested in art history. It's really important. Um, um, for him and to see your sketchbook wall, I don't know what you call it, but your wall of your influences when you're in your studio space is also really interesting, all these images. And um, and I know you visited Venice a couple of years ago, didn't yes. you? And, um, you know, you, you were really influenced by the light there and the shadows and things like that. So a lot of influences there, Kerry, um, you know, so yeah. Great, well, I can't see any other question then. So um, thanks very much for you that have joined the webinar. Um, this has been a bit of a trial webinar and I did have a bit of technical issues in the middle there, which distracted me a little bit. Uh, but this is um, partly recorded. Uh, we, we, lo oh, and we love to meet again now to finish recording it because I forgot to record it. It's also been out on Facebook Live, so it'll be available there. Um, also to note as well that this is available in, Eng in Welsh. So if you've come across the English one, then the Welsh one is available. And um, so you can, you can, and they'll be on our, um, on the Joseph Herman Art Foundation um, uh, YouTube page as well. So Jochen fawr iawn i ti o wain nathan i llwyddo i siarad Saesneg. So we managed to speak English. I was a bit concerned about that. Um, and thank you all for, for uh, joining us as well, whether now uh, live or also in the future as well. Jochen fawr i ti hoel. Thank you very much. Jochen fawr. <laughs>